This entire Montessori shape puzzle was carved using a desktop CNC router. It's made up of six different puzzle pieces, each of which fits into a corresponding slot within the main housing. And once everything is inside, they're held in place by an elastic band that's tied across the bottom. If we take a closer look at each of the puzzle pieces, you'll notice that the middle section slides up and down, and within that, there's a small ball bearing to make everything rattle. If you're looking for an extremely easy CNC project to make as a gift, or even to try to sell to make a profit, stick around and I'll show you exactly how I made this. Let's get into it. What's going on guys? Welcome back to Aquavita Woodworks. And if you haven't been here before, my name's Justin and this is my garage wood shop where I like to build things using my desktop CNC machine. I use a Shapoko Pro XXL CNC, but any standard CNC machine can be used to make the projects that I build on this channel. The only limiting requirement is that it needs to be large enough to fit the biggest component within that specific project. And in today's case, that's going to be a component that is 18.25 inches on the X axis and 10 inches on the Y axis. So if your machine is big enough to fit that size component, then you're good to go. Now, in order to carve anything out on a CNC machine, you need to have files that you can import into whatever CAD program you like to use. So you can then start assigning toolpaths. All the files for today's project are available in the link down below, right below that like button. Uh, and if you do decide to purchase them, you won't just be getting SVG files. I really pride myself on the files that I sell for all of my projects, and I tried to go above and beyond in making them understandable. All the files that you'll get are not only proved to be accurate, because it's what I'm using in this video to make the project, but I also include a very detailed PDF build manual that you can use instead of really watching this video. Uh, and it's gonna go over everything from gathering materials to assigning toolpaths with uh, specific bits and depths, all the way to the assembly process. You really don't need to watch this video. Uh, you could just read that booklet and you could understand everything you need to know to build this project, but you should watch this video anyway. And if you do decide to keep watching this video, please consider hitting the subscribe button because according to this graphic that I see in my analytics, uh, most of you aren't subscribed and that hurts my feelings. So you should hit that button. The project that we're building today is a Montessori style wooden toy for kids. Uh, it has this main body right here with multiple shapes cut into the side panels, which are secured into place in pockets in the top and bottom covers. The pieces that fit into those shapes will look like this, uh, made up of three different pieces of wood each, and has a smaller piece in the middle that can slide freely, and a small bearing in the middle that should help it rattle additionally. Keep in mind that I haven't actually built this in real life yet, so hopefully this 3D model is accurate enough to build in real life, but I guess we're about to find out. Now when you do open that build manual, one of the first pages that you'll see is a material cut sheet. It's going to list the stock dimensions as well as the thicknesses, and I'll put it on the screen right now so you can see what we're working with. Uh, I'm going to be using mostly, or only, teak and maple uh, because I like the contrasting colors and I had some of it on hand already. The only issue with that is that the teak I have is one inch thick and I need to plane some of it down to half an inch. So let's get to work cutting our material. So with our material cut down to the size and planed down to the right thicknesses, we can import these dimensions into our CAD program and start assigning toolpaths so we can carve them on the CNC. Uh, we're only going to be using two CNC bits for this project, the eighth inch down cut bit and a quarter inch down cut bit. Uh, most of you probably already have these on hand since most CNC projects will use uh, one or both of these bits. 
When it comes to toolpaths, uh, the toolpaths are extremely easy. We're only using pockets and contours, both inside and outside, to follow along either side of the vector. Uh, they're extremely simple, but instead of showing you how I assign them within my CAD program, I thought it would be easier to kind of edit the SVG files and show them in a PowerPoint style to show you which vectors to select and which toolpaths to assign and at what depth. So let's start with the top and bottom cover and get on the machine. Now before I carve the top and bottom covers, I thought it would be a good idea to carve shapes onto the other sides of the covers just to dictate which shape goes into which side panel. In order to accomplish this, I just used Aura Mask, used a 90 degree V-bit to carve the shapes, I think at 0.1 inch depth, um, painted them and then removed the Aura Mask. This is totally optional. You definitely do not need to do this to build this project, but I will include the SVG file for these shapes in the build plans if you decide to buy them. Uh, but now that that's done, let's flip this over and put it on the machine and get carving. So this is what the SVG for the top and bottom cover will look like when you import it into your CAD program. That outside blue perimeter line represents the overall dimensions of the stock. So if anything is off, you can just click and drag to make the dimensions correct. And you can see that I have the CNC bits used as well as the toolpaths included. The first toolpath will be a pocket with the eighth inch downcut bit at 0.25 inch depth on the 12 uh, slots that you see there, which will later fit the inside or the side panels. Uh, the next one will be a pocket for those two small holes, which will later hold the knots for an elastic band to hold the shapes uh, in place. And then we'll have an inside contour with the quarter inch bit uh, all the way through with tabs, which I have located there, uh, and then finishing it off with an outside contour with the same quarter inch down cut bit, again using tabs. And once it's done, it should look something like this. Up next, I'll be carving the shape covers, and the most important thing to note here is that I'm using double-sided tape to secure it to the CNC instead of clamps. Uh, and other than that, you can see the CNC bits and toolpaths that we're going to be using. The first of which is a pocket which, with a quarter-inch downcut bit at 0.5-inch depth for all those holes that will fit dowels later on. And then we'll be finishing it up with the quarter-inch downcut bit, uh, carving all the way at stock bottom with an outside contour uh, again, not using tabs because we do have double-sided tape. And once you're finished, it should look like this. And following the shape covers, we'll have the shape middles, which will be the pieces, obviously, in the middle that will slide back and forth. Uh, again, make sure to use double-sided tape. Uh, the first carve will be using the 8th inch down cut bit, again cutting through all those dowel holes. This time we're going to cut all the way through the stock so these can slide freely. And then we're going to move on to pocketing out the middle all the way through so the ball bearing can fit. And that's going to be using an 8th inch down cut bit all the way at stock bottom. And the last toolpath for this component will be an outside contour with the quarter inch bit all the way through the stock. Again, no tabs because of the double sided tape. Final result should look like this. I still have a bit of onion skin left on these components, so they're not fully detached yet, but I'll deal with that later because we still have to make the side panels. This component is the fastest carve, but is also a little bit different than the rest because it's actually two different pieces of wood carved side by side. Just make sure to secure them with double-sided tape and make sure that everything is lined up evenly. This carve only uses an eighth inch down cut bit and a really quick inside contour at stock bottom to cut out all the shapes of the side panels. Once it's finished, it should look something like this. All right, all of our components are off the machine and I didn't really run into any issues. Now it's time to start removing the tabs that are holding these in place. Uh, and on this component, which is the shape middles, I'm gonna run it through my drum sander just to remove that last onion skin. So these will kind of pop out easier. Uh, I don't wanna make sanding too hard on myself, so it'll be easier to use the drum sander. Uh, I also need to take the side panels and cut these into six inch lengths that will eventually fit into the covers over here. Um, and I'm gonna round over the edges of the top and bottom covers, I think, using a round over bit. Once that's all done, I'll sand up to my desired grit and we can get ready to start finishing these. Let's get to it.
All the components are sanded and ready to be finished, but one thing we need to do before we can do that is take a drill and put a hole into this top cover here, the one with the large hole, through these small holes so that an elastic band can be secured uh, against the two of them. I ended up doing that by using a 1 16th inch drill bit to make a small starter hole through each side and then finishing the hole off with a 9 64th inch drill bit that's big enough to fit the elastic band. That elastic band that I used, uh, I got it off Amazon, I'll leave a link down below. Let's go spray these with uh, polyacrylic. This is the first time that I've used polyacrylic to finish any of my projects. I normally prefer to use spray lacquer, but because I'm giving this to my daughter, uh, I thought that a water-based varnish would be a little bit safer. I ended up applying two coats on each side of all the components, and in between each coat, I used 800 grit sandpaper to kind of scratch the surface a little bit just to smooth it out. And after doing that, I also used a tack cloth to wipe off any dust that may be remaining. Now that everything's dry, I'm ready to start assembling all the components, uh, starting with the elastic band across the bottom cover, and then I'm going to use some dowels to assemble all of these small rattles. Uh, and just make sure to put a small ball bearing in the middle when you're assembling them. Uh, let's get to it. This thing's not going anywhere. All right, so everything is assembled and we're finished with this project. Uh, everything came together as it should. There's no issues in the assembly. And I think that these pieces uh, with this little sliding feature in the middle that locks that bearing in place is a pretty cool rattle system. Uh, it's pretty tempting to try to get that bearing out, but there's no way that you can. And the rattle that it makes is pretty good. Uh, my only complaint about this, if there is one, is that this square specifically is kind of hard to get out once it's in here. If I put it in, Trying to get it out of this elastic is kind of hard. All you have to do is pull it to the side and kind of a shake it out and eventually it will come out hopefully. Yeah, yeah. That one's kind of hard to get out because it's bigger than the others, but overall this is a pretty good project, all being said. Uh, so yeah, we're finished and thanks for watching. For the millionth time, the plans are available for this down in the description and see you next time.